Welcome to our Blue Rose. Please like and subscribe. Hey, welcome back to Speed Brew 2.0. So this is basically going to be quite similar in terms of process to our previous fastest beer in the world, which is a 60 hour from uh, mashing into serving. And yeah, so this one's going to be 72 hours. And the emphasis is on just making it a better beer, more flavor. The last one was okay, but it was a bit, a bit lagerish, kind of sort of a hybrid lager, um, West Coast style pale ale, but this one we want to just, just be a better beer. And what we're going to do to try and achieve that is, yeah, firstly 72 hours, just hoping that extra 12 hours enable us to do a bit of a, um, a dry hop, so a small scale back dry hop. Also just a little bit of extra time conditioning too. The main differences are, other than the fact that it's a hazy pale, uh, we are using, I must keep saying we, I'm on my own again. I, I seem to be the only one who ever wants to brew around here. Uh, we're using Hornindal Kvike this time from Omega Yeast. Love that packet, real big fan of that. And the reason I've chosen this is it seems to be the best uh, for more tropical beers. I mean, just reading on the back. A wonderfully unique Norwegian, Kv Norwegian Kvike, Hornindal's blend of cooperative strains produce a tropical flavour and complex aroma that can present as stone fruit, pineapple and dried fruit, uh, which complement fruit forward hops. And that's exactly what I've chosen, so partnering that with Sabro, Mosaic and Azaka should give us some really good stone fruit, pineapple, tropical qualities. And just hope that in 72 hours, that's what we'll get. And that is about it. So it's currently uh, just coming up to six o'clock on Tuesday. And we hope to drink this at the same time on Friday. The fermentation fridge is, is at 35 degrees. So we're good to go there. We are using the Firmzilla Gen 3.2 with hot bong this time, and fermenting at 25 psi. Basically, look at, look at the last speed brew video we did to see the specifics. Yeah, I think that's about it. Let's get mashing in. I'll tell you one thing good about brewing on your own is you haven't got some hyenas ripping the piss out of you every five minutes. Oh, you didn't do this, you've done that. What are you doing about there? Yeah? Against karate. Yeah, if I had it, I need to come through that wall. That one goes out to West Coast, Best Coast. This is, we're going, we've gone for a very soft water profile here. A la Verdant, we are, I keep saying we, I've really got to stop saying that. A la Verdant, I have added calcium chloride to the mash water and sodium chloride I'm going to put in the boil. And according to Verdant, that should give us the nice slick mouthfeel we're looking for. Right, yeah, so mashing for an hour at 68, and we have 3,800 grams of lager malt, 780 of wheat malt, and 520 of oat malt, and 260 grams of flake barley, just to give it a bit more of a grainy bite, just to up that body. For those interested, crisp, crisp malt seems to be paler on oats and wheat than many of the others that we've used in the past, so if you're really trying to whiten up your hazy pails and neepers, then that's a good option. Check out the EBC number. Okay, mash over, time for a small sparge, like I said, probably about five liters I'm looking at. Mash went well, uneventful. Had to adjust the pH down from just under six to 5.4. That was all fine with the old lactic acid. And this kettle handled very well. I mean, it was rarely, it was always within half a degree of 68. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Anybody else find it with brew days? I just spilt, I just, one of my sockets just came undone. <laughs> so I spilt a load of work. Again, second time today. So anybody find that just brewing is just a constant battle of not losing your shit? Maybe because I'm just an angry, angry man. So what I'll do, it's still recirking. I'm just gonna transfer that over to the sparge water and that can just keep going around and doing its thing. 
until we're all pre boil vol. The IBU we're looking at for this brew is 10, so not too bitter. And there was no bittering hops. I've got the uh, Whirlpool paddle in ready to go. That's just been sanitizing for the last 10 minutes or so. Yes, as I was saying, that 10 IBU is based on it taking 20 minutes to get from 100 degrees or 99 degrees down to below 80. Well, I think it's about 79.5, but anyway, yeah, that's what the 10 IBU is based on. And if I need to manipulate that 20 minutes, Alexa, set time for 20 minutes. Yeah, if I need to manipulate that, what I'll do, I'll just link up some hoses and get chilling just to make sure that it doesn't take longer than 20 minutes to get down below 80, because then obviously it'll be more bitter. So that's the plan. And I'll obviously use the, uh, the Whirlpool paddle too to, to help me chill it if needed. Right, let's get the hops in. It's eight grams, eight grams of Sabro, eight grams of mosaic, and eight grams of Azaka. I think I said what we'll probably do is, we'll do the tasting after 72 hours, but I was thinking that we'll probably keg the rest and just see in two weeks, three weeks, a month, whatever, just see how it compares, probably do a, a short on that. Be interesting. Alexa, stop. Okay, so that's the 20 minutes. 80.1, pretty happy with that, 80. That's 79.9, look at that. That is magic. Excellent, so we'll just leave this another 10, 15 minutes. Just steadily whirlpooling around. Get on with the chill. I've got the blanking plate, as you can see. Okay, well it's still over 30 degrees, that's good. And this yeast is in for one roller coaster. Up, down, up, down, pressure, serve, bosh. And that, all she wrote, people. And that's all she wrote. As on Speed Brew Volume 1, 1 1.0, I'm gonna gas it right from the off to 25 PSI. There we go, looking good. Two days later. Yeah, we have been drinking, it's Easter weekend. Get on it, people. Anyway, so we are sat uh, at 24, uh, it's just over 28 hours out from drink time. And we're gonna drink regardless of how it turns out. Uh, and yeah, so it's at 24 degrees. What I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get the tent down at this point to dry hop. And also I'm aware that last time when I did the 60 hour brew, it did take a long time to bring it down from 35 degrees down to almost cold crash 10, but it didn't even get there. I think we got to about six or seven degrees. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try and just drop that temp so we've got a better chance of, of getting down colder. Just as you can see, it is looking pretty angry. Still, still got a decent krausen on. Uh, there's still a fair amount of um, yeast activity going on in there. We're at 10.21 and I need to dry hop. So. I have here uh, seven grams per liter. Didn't want to be too excessive, but still wanted to get uh, a nice amount of aroma and juice out of these hops. It's uh, three grams, three grams per liter of Sabro, two grams of Mosaic and two grams of Azaka. I've got the trusty hot bong. One thing that's immediately evident is the fact that this Omega Hornindal yeast is taking longer to get down to um, our final gravity than the Voss did. The Voss was pretty much, well, it wasn't even 24 hours. It, I think it was from 18, 18 hours from memory. That's of course the dry yeast from Lalamon. Um, yeah, so this is, this is taking at least twice, if not two and a half times the length. And in we go. Yeah, just giving it another decent wobble so that the hops can come into contact with the wort rather than just sit on top of the crows in there. Again, this is kind of uncharted territory, but I'm thinking that probably is a good thing to do. I have noticed a couple of times through the fermentation process, monitoring it on the tilt, that it has, it's not stuck, but it's, it's stayed on the same reading for you know, a couple of hours at a time. 
So I've been wobbling the firmzilla from time to time and that does seem to kick it back into life. I don't know what the reasons are for that, but anyway, maybe it's the fact that there's quite a lot of yeast at the top on the crowds and that's just getting back in and rejoining the party. The next day. Okay, that is 72 hours and about five minutes. Let's get in here and see how, how we're looking. I popped in about four hours ago and okay, that's looking considerably better and less angry than it was. I, yeah, I came in four hours ago and I there was quite, there's about a centimeter of Krausen still, maybe a little bit less. Anyway, so I, I, I did the old shaky shaky again and a lot of it instantly started falling and this is now at 2.9 degrees. So we have benefited from a good cold crash. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now, Ed, Ed is still uh, in a bad way with his knee. So I'm gonna put it into a glass, let's have a look and see how it looks. And then I'm gonna put it in two cans, take it around to his place, he's only a couple of minutes up the road and we'll try it there. But let's first of all, let's see how it looks in the glass. Oh yeah. It's certainly carbonated. It's over carbonated. Oh, that smells good. I shouldn't have smelt it. I'm kind of giving the game away there. It is over carbonated, but that's all good. So hopefully by the time we get it around to Ed's in, Ed's in cans, how's that looking to you guys at home? I mean, that's looking good, isn't it? Got the cans, let's head around to Ed's. Welcome to the Eagle's Nest. How's it going, Eagle? How's the knee? Bit on, sorry, I thought you were talking to him. Uh, yeah, it's alright, it's getting there. Slow progress, but yeah, it'll be alright. Well, there you go, Chief. Chef. Enjoy. Thank you. Cheers, Chief. Am I going to enjoy this? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it. That, that, that's, that's what we're here to find out. <laughs> That's all right, isn't it? Don't know, yeah, I haven't tried it. Oh like. yeah. <laughs> Quite fizzy. Oh wow, it smells really, really good. <laughs> you reckon it smells really good? Yeah. It does actually, yeah, it, does, it smells really good. That Horning Dahl's done the business. Yeah? Doesn't it? That smells really, really nice and tropical. Yeah. You like that? Yeah. So already it's a lot better than the last one, isn't it? Because the last one had barely, it had a little bit of orange aroma, but there wasn't much else going on. Yeah. I'm really happy with that. I Honestly, I was really worried about it yesterday because, I mean, bear in mind that the dry hop was uh, 25 hours ago. Yeah. Um, you were looking like really pressure. angry. Yeah, but yeah, it, was. it was like a dark cloud. I mean, the guys at home know what it looked like. You yeah. won't know until you see the video. Well, I'm going to find out. You're going to find <laughs> out. Have you, have you not tasted? No, not yet. No. Go on then. So what you, have, you, have you tasted them? I, I, I've had it some It and smells really it good. It does, doesn't it? Go on. So much better. It's a lot better than that. So, so much better. I mean, that is totally acceptable. Did you like it? Yeah, I loved it. Did What's the fish thing? Did you like thing? it? Second. I was just asking what the fish thought. Did you like it? What, the, what is that? <laughs> it's a fish. There's only one thing I'm not happy with. Yeah? It's a little bit sweeter. And I think it should be. Really? Yeah, that's because on the Tilt Pro, it was reading at, it was high, had high, it was hovering around the, twi uh, the, the, the 20, 21 mark. Yeah. Um, but then I've, I've employed the shaking uh, strategy on this one. I've shook, shaken it quite a few times okay. to get quite a lot of the sediment to drop. Right. And to kind of like kick the yeast back into action. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and anyway, when I did that, it then dropped down to 10, 17, 10, 16, which was the final gravity. Right. But during the cold crash, it went up to 10, 20, 10, 21. Okay. So I think it's a little bit on the sweet side. So it's kind of missing that sort of like crispness. It. I like it. Yeah, I, I, I haven't really? picked up on that at all. But if I was served that, I'd be, I'd be pretty happy. I think that extra little bit of sweetness makes the body feel... It could, it could feel a bit thin yeah, otherwise. I, I suppose that's a positive. Honestly, I cannot believe that's been done in 72 yeah? hours. The last one was a little bit... It's a little bit rough around the edge. Yeah. Oh yeah, very much it so. It had no hop character, no... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not much aroma at all, whereas this has quite a lot of character, yeah. I think. Quite a lot of... It's 5.5%. Is it? Yeah. It's decent, isn't it? Yeah. It's dank, it's tropical. Yeah. You're lost for words, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I am. I can't believe that that's been done in 72 hours. So the Hornindale does the business. That yeah. would be my probably my go-to. Okay. My go-to hazy stroke Nipa yeah. speed brew yeast. So how long was the dry hop in contact with the beer for then? Yeah, it was about 28 hours. Wow. Yeah, 28 hours. 
I, I'm not sure I, I, I do much differently next time. I might maybe keep... I, I started to drop the temperature um, from before the dry hop because I was paranoid it wasn't going to get down to cold crash yeah. stroke serving temp quick enough because the last one didn't. Um, so what I might do is maybe... I think with slightly more... Slightly getting slightly creative with kind of like drop the temperature quicker, whether that's a fan or doing it in a freezer, you know, because obviously it's a fridge, it doesn't get, doesn't get that yeah, cold. Yeah, yeah. But if I can control temperature more drastically, I think that, that it'll be even better. Because I think that I'd probably extend the fermentation maybe by another four to five hours just to get it to drop that gravity oh, okay. down to 10, 15, 16. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then go for a, yeah, a real hard cold crash. I think that's probably the way to do it. But other than that, I think it's. You're, you're hooked on this whole speedy thing, speedy brew. I'm not. I, I think it's interesting. Love it. Yeah. I, well, I think YouTube likes it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't believe. Give it the thumbs up. Yeah, definitely, definitely thumbs up for me. I wasn't really. Particularly you were dubious, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I think I think anyone would be, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's an insult to those who put a lot of time and effort into their craft. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you won't know this either, but the Hornendale was, it took about twice the amount of time that the Voskvike took. Oh, right. Uh, the dry Voskvike yeah, yeah. took. To the point where I think that if you were to extend that from three days to four days... How much more that would give you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that might be the sweet spot. Yeah, that would yeah. probably be the next video in the <laughs> yeah. Speed Brew series. <laughs> anyway, I think we're done, aren't we? Yeah, I think so. The Action Mash! Yeah, good effort. Really, really, really impressive. And I don't even have to pretend this time. This, this one's genuinely good. <laughs> Well, I think last one we said was pretty ropey, but it was still better than a macro log. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas this one actually can masquerade as craft beer. Well, not masquerade even. Yeah, this no, one is. can be considered yeah, yeah. a homebrew craft beer. Yeah. And on that note, happy Easter if you celebrate it. Thanks for watching. As always, take care. We'll see you soon. And that's a goodbye from him. Say bye. Say goodbye. Say bye bye. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Ah. Huh.